Welcome back to another video to support the Cambridge IGCSE and O-Level Computer Science for the syllabus which covers exams taking place from 2023 to 2025. Um, we are on topic 5, the internet and its uses, and we are looking at digital currency. We need to understand the concept of digital currency and how digital currencies are used. Before we start actually talking about digital currency, I do want to talk a little bit about money and what it is and how it enables us to buy goods and services and pay salaries or get paid from our employers. Considering the number of transactions that take place nowadays, it would be impossible to carry out all of these exchanges without a tool quite as effective or as practical as money. But how did money start? Where did it come from? Well, probably in about 2000 BC, when people wanted to exchange goods or wanted to wanted to have things they'd use a system called bartering which basically means swapping if somebody had something that somebody else wanted or somebody needed something that somebody else had then they could arrange a, a, a system whereby they would swap those goods but as, as, as time went on obviously if somebody didn't have anything in particular they wanted to swap or if somebody had something and they didn't want the thing that the person was offering, then this could prove um, a problem. So to overcome these difficulties, people started using such things as metals, animals, or even seashells, a case in here, where a common value for these items could be agreed upon and was used to buy things. In time, precious metals started to become mined and um, these were used in trades. I think it was the um, the Lydian people in um, 600 BC were the first people to actually make coins from this metal. Um, later on, though, a lot later on, maybe in the in the 17th century, a new system of payment came about due to the need to carry out large transactions. Um, this uh, this was paper money, and these were printed by central banks, and the notes were seen as receipts. The bank will pay the bearer so to speak. From banks, we then moved on and we st we invented um, a credit card system, a method of payment where you basically use a, a plastic card and you don't need to carry any of this money, any coins or any, any pound notes, any, um, any, um, any bills at all. And transactions were done using um, a machine such as this, whereby you put this in and you were given a secret number and that was linked to your bank account. Obviously, in um, in times of COVID, um, in, in in recent activities, um, we're wanting to see this less less and less. Our shops are rather wanting to see this less and less. We've no hide. We've no idea, apart from the date that's printed on it, where this money has been. We know how long it's been in circulation, but we don't know where it's where it's been, where it's come from, who has had it. So people would rather accept payment by credit cards. And you can purchase things online and do all sorts of other things with these cards and the numbers are printed on the cards as opposed to money. From credit cards though, we can now link these credit cards to wallets in our mobile phones and on our computers and we can pay for goods, certainly goods bought over the internet, very, very quickly. Also in shops, we simply tap the phone onto one of these machines and, um, and the goods are paid for. No need to actually touch anything or, or hand over anything to anybody else. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about digital currency on the next slide and then we will move on to cryptocurrency. Digital currency exists purely in a digital format, purely electronic, figures on a spreadsheet in a database on the computer network. It's not pound notes in a bank vault, it's just numbers on a spreadsheet. It has no physical form unlike conventional fiat currency. And when I say fiat, I mean things like um, euros, dollars, sterling, pound notes, um, Japanese yen, all these things that you can basically put in your pocket. You can't put digital currency in your pocket. And I've put down there, fiat is a Latin word meaning let it be done, since conventional currency is backed up by governments and banks rather than being linked to gold or silver reserves. It is referring to as it's, this is referred to as fiat currency. Digital currency is an accepted form of payment now, enabling you to pay for goods and services. As with cash or credit card, debit cards, digital currency can be tr 
transferred between various bank accounts when carrying out transactions. So if you want to buy something using a credit card or using um, something like Apple Pay, it is possible because this money only exists as data, data on a computer system. And we're transferring this data, this um, money packet from your bank account, from one sort of data center to another one, i.e. the person or the shop, the company who's supplying the goods or the service. With what I've said already, digital currency still relies on a central banking system. I've got a diagram here which shows Nick has got um, a bank account with the X bank and Arena has some money or has a bank account with Y bank. Now, if Nick wants to send some money from his bank to Arena's bank, they've still got to use a central banking system. Um, so there's, there's something called centralization. Um, the problem with centralization though is it is maintaining confidentiality and security. These have always been issues with the digital currency system. And that's why now, um, in, in this video is going out in 2021, um, a lot of the banks all around the world, China is piloting some schemes, but at least another 14 countries have, have started, including Sweden and South Korea, piloting their own CBDC currencies, central banking digital currency. So it's not in the curriculum, but I suggest in terms of um, future trends and, um, and what is happening in the world, I do suggest you do a little bit of reading and I'll put some links um, down below. CBDCs, Central Banking Digital Currencies. Okay, so this leads me nicely onto the next part and this is the reason why central banks are producing these digital currencies. Um, there is now an alternative one example of digital currency known as cryptocurrency has essentially overcome these issues by introducing a something called decentralization. It removes the need for a bank. It removes the need for a central banking system. So for example, Nick has now, rather than a bank account, he's got a, an online wallet and so has Arena. And we can simply do a transaction between the two wallets. If Nick wants to send Arena some money, he can do it from one wallet to the other, okay? So what is cryptocurrency? Well, cryptocurrency uses something called cryptography, which we've come across um, in other parts of the syllabus, and it uses this to track transactions. It was created, as I mentioned before, to, to address the problems associated with centralization of digital currencies. Um, the traditional digital currencies are regulated by central banks and governments in much the same way as fiat currencies. Um, this means that all transactions and exchange rates are determined by these bodies, by banks and by governments. Cryptocurrency has no state control and all the rules are set by the cryptocurrency community itself. Unlike existing digital currencies, cryptocurrency transactions are publicly available and therefore all transactions can be tracked and the amount of money in the system is monitored. The cryptocurrency system works on being within something called a blockchain network, which is extremely secure. Um, we will cover that in the next video. It's quite a meaty topic, so we need to spend some time looking into what exactly is a blockchain. And finally, just for fun, I've got a, um, a crypto simulator. It's called CryptoSpaniards.com. And it's a great way of investing without actually spending any money to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. Use it with the students um, to introduce them to cryptocurrency, to Bitcoin, um, Ethereum, and so on and so forth. Have a go and see if you can make any virtual money. But until next time, blockchain technologies, um, I bid you farewell. Please, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very, very much indeed. See you soon.